Hello everyone, I welcome you all in the 8th week of the course Process Equipment Design and here we are in 36th lecture of this course. And in this lecture we will discuss design of evaporator and if you remember this topic we have already started in 7th week where 34th and 35th lectures are devoted to this ok and we are continuing the design of evaporator in 8th week also. So, let us start the design of evaporator. If you remember the 35th lecture there we have discussed the multiple effect evaporator functioning as well as different points which are related to triple effect evaporator in very detail ok. However, we have not derived the governing equation which are related to multiple effect evaporator and especially triple effect evaporator right. So, in this lecture we are going to derive the governing equation we will solve this equation to design triple effect evaporator ok. So, as far as triple effect evaporator is concerned this is the schematic where feed is entering into the first effect and concentrated liquor is entering from first to second effect and then to third effect and finally, we have concentrated product from third effect ok. And similarly, we can have the movement of vapor where steam is entering into the first effect and uh, vapor generated in first effect is entering as a heating media in second effect and so on from second to third effect and from third effect to condenser and the whole assembly is connected to the vacuum pump right. So, this is the schematic. So, let us start deriving the governing equation associated to triple effect evaporator. So, first of all we will focus on effect 1. Now, if you remember the 35th lecture of this course, there we have derived the governing equation based on material and energy balance for single effect ok. So, in the same line we will derive the governing equation for triple effect evaporator also. So, let us focus on effect 1. First of all we will make the enthalpy balance and uh, this is basically the enthalpy balance of all streams and if you see the first effect as far as streams are concerned we have total 5 stream F, V0, V1 and L1 and along with this we have this condensate also right which is again with the flow V0 right. So, while making the balance we can consider enthalpy of feed that is F into XF that is F into HF plus Q1, Q1 is basically the heat associated with this stream minus V1 vapor is generated which is having enthalpy H1. So, usually we represent enthalpy of vapor by capital H and enthalpy of liquid by small h and that is the usual nomenclature ok. So, further we have minus L1 which is containing H1 amount of heat ok. So, in this case you see I am not considering this condensate ok and that will be clear in next equation when we will elaborate it further. So, I am having F H F plus V naught lambda naught ok because here I am considering the latent heat only and uh, after supplying latent heat this condensate exits ok. So, if I consider this condensate, I should also consider enthalpy of vapor with this V naught. So, you see V naught when I am considering it is basically H naught minus small h naught. So, that will be nothing but V naught lambda naught. So, this we have already considered over here right. So, finally, we have V 1 as F minus L 1 and here if you see we have shown this L naught that should be capital F ok. Please make a correction over here. So, F minus L 1 should be V 1 right and further I am having L 1 as it is H 1 as it is ok. Further if I need to rearrange this equation we are considering points as we are considering this capital H as lambda 1 plus small h 1 right because that is the enthalpy of vapor. So, considering this as well as this equation we can rearrange and found that F into 
एच एफ माइनस एच वन ओके सो दैट एच वन विल कम फ्रॉम हेयर वेन इट विल बी एसोसिएटेड विद एफ प्लस वी नॉट लैमडा नॉट एंड देन वी कैन हैव एफ माइनस एल वन इन टू लैमडा वन सो इन दिस वे आई कैन ऑप्टेन द एंथेल्पी बैलेंस इन फर्स्ट इफेक्ट एंड सिमिलरली आई कैन एंड फर्दर आई कैन ऑप्टेन द रेट इक्वेशन एंड वॉट इज रेट इक्वेशन क्यू इज इक्वल टू यू ए डेल्टा टी मीन एंड इन दिस इवेपोरेटर मीन टेम्परेचर इज बेसिकली द हीटिंग मीडिया टेम्परेचर माइनस इफेक्ट टेम्परेचर सो इफ आई फोकस ऑन फर्स्ट इफेक्ट टेम्परेचर डिफरेंस शुड बी टी नॉट माइनस टी वन राइट सो यू वन ए टी नॉट माइनस टी वन शुड बी इक्वल टू वी नॉट लैमडा नॉट बिकॉज दिस इज द टोटल हीट ड्यूटी ऑफ एन इफेक्ट ओके सो इफ यू सी एज फार एज डिजाइन इज कंसर्न वॉट वी वॉन्ट टू कैलकुलेट we need to calculate the area of effect and steam consumption right and here we are considering that area of each effect is equal okay so here i am having the governing equation for effect 1 so if you focus on this equation we can have this is the final enthalpy balance and this is the rate equation okay so one effect two governing equation right in the similar line if i ask you to write the equation for second effect how you can write it you can further write in the same line like l1 h1 minus h2 okay here instead of v not you can write v1 and that should be equal to f minus l1 and that should be multiplied by lambda 1 when it is entering into the second effect right and uh, minus we can have l1 minus l2 lambda 2 okay in the similar line i can write this also u2 a t1 minus t2 should be equal to v1 lambda 1 where v1 is this okay so in this way you can represent each effect with two equation okay so here we can have equation for second effect this is equation this is basically enthalpy balance of second effect and this is the rate equation in the similar line i can find equation for third effect also and we can have enthalpy balance like this and rate equation like this okay so if i combinedly see equations of all effect we can observe that each effect is shown with two equation right we have total equation as 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 okay and here if you see we have further elaborated hf or h1 fine what is the enthalpy of liquid that should be cp of the liquid into temperature right so considering that we have elaborated equation that is the enthalpy balance equation of all effects right now if i ask you what are the known parameter over here okay so known parameter we also call that as specified parameter and these parameters are f that is the feed rate xf that is the concentration of the feed tf temperature of the feed t not p not p3 because last effect pressure or temperature you usually know so once i know p3 i can find out t3 so t3 is usually known to me and further we have concentration x and further we have concentration x3 so x3 is basically product concentration so when you define any evaporator problem you know a priori that the concentration of the feed should be this much when we obtain the product okay so feed should be concentrated from this level to that level so you already know the product concentration along with the feed concentration right along with this we have u1 u2 and u3 here you should consider u2 so all these values are known to so all these values are known to me i am considering equal area and forward feed i have considered so whatever governing equation we have discussed now so whatever governing equations we are discussing these equations are specifically for forward feed okay if i change the feed sequence these equation will be changed so you should understand how to make balance in each effect so that you can make the governing equation 
depending upon different feed sequences right so here we are seeing that uh, specified parameters are given and uh, if i ask you that what should be the unknown parameter okay if you observe these six equations what are the unknown if i focus on this unknown is basically t1 right unknown is v0 unknown is l1 okay in this equation t1 and v0 along with the area okay second effect if i focus on l1 t2 l1 l2 all lambdas are usually known to us okay and we have area and t2 t1 and l1 okay so if we focus on third effect equation we have l2 unknown t2 unknown t3 is known to me l1 l2 and l2 okay l3 now it is unknown but you know this while making the component balance that we will see in the solution of these equations right and uh, here i am having unknown as area and t2 and l1 and l2 so if you see these six equations of three effects the unknowns are basically v0 t1 t2 l1 l2 and a okay so 1 2 3 4 5 6 six equation six unknowns are there and how many equations i am having six equation so six equation six unknown so unique solution must exist i understand that you know about this unique solution that is basically we have only one solution okay and uh, so if you solve this problem how you can solve this because some equation among these are non linear in nature for example if you focus on this rate equation a is unknown to me and t1 is unknown to me right and similarly if i focus on this l1 is unknown to me t2 is unknown to me so this will become non linear term in the similar line this will become non linear term okay and uh, this term also becomes non linear this term also becomes non linear like this so if i am having the six equation even a single equation is non linear in nature you have set of non linear equation and you have to solve these equation accordingly okay so to solve these equation we will use a specific method that is badger macab method okay so as far as this method is concerned we should consider some steps and these steps are we have to assume temperature of first and second effect like t1 and t2 how we have to assume this that we will discuss we need to determine v1 v2 and v3 okay so instead of that we can say that we need to determine l1 l2 and l3 right if i know all these i can automatically calculate v1 v2 v3 okay third step is we have to use the rate equations to find out heat transfer area a1 a2 and a3 and if you remember we have considered heat transfer area equal for all effects okay so that should be a now if i am observing the variation in area like a1 a2 a3 that will be not like a1 a2 a3 and these areas are not same we can further redistribute the temperature in such a way so that area should be equal okay so this method is basically iterative method right so let's see all these steps one by one with the help of example so that method is more clear to you so example is like it is desired to design a triple effect evaporator to concentrate the solute from 10% solution which is the feed to 50% by weight and this is for the product right the feed rate is 50000 pound per hour and it enters the first effect at 100 degree fahrenheit okay we have to use forward feed we have to use forward feed and saturated vapor is available at 250 degree fahrenheit and which is used as a heating media 
third effect is operated at absolute pressure corresponding to boiling point of 125 degree Fahrenheit and uh, this is corresponding to the vacuum which is generated in third effect and in this problem we have to neglect boiling point elevation. Okay. Cp value for simplicity we are considering as 1 BTU for all feed as well as liquid streams. All lambdas are equal and that should be 1000 BTU per pound. U1, U2, U3 are known to me as 500, 300 and 200. Okay. So, this problem I have taken from Kern book and that is also given in Sirth book. Okay. So, you can follow these books and it is also available in CD Holland book. Okay. So, here we are going to solve this problem using Badger Macab method. Now, the first step is to find out unknown temperature that is T1 and T2. Okay. Now, if I ask you what is the total driving force available in the system that should be T0 minus T3. Okay. And the complete driving force in each effect like delta T1, delta T2 and delta T3 will be distribution of this maximum driving force okay, which is T0 minus T3. Okay. So, considering this we have to find out unknown temperature that is T1 and T2. Now, to find out unknown temperature we are taking another assumption that equal heat is transferred in each effect. Right. So, if I consider Q1 heat of first effect that should be equal to Q2 and that should be equal to Q3. Okay. If I am considering these two and elaborating it what we can observe U1 A delta T1 right that should be equal to U2 A delta T2. Okay. So, here we are assuming that each effect area is same. So, this factor will be cancelled out delta T2 by delta T1 will be equal to U1 by U2 as you can observe here. Okay. U1 and U2 value I know so that should be 5 by 3. Okay. In the similar line I can consider Q2 equal to Q3 or let us say Q1 equal to Q3 anything I can take. So, that should be equal to delta T3 by delta T1 should be U1 by U3. right? So, in that way I can obtain delta T3 by delta T1 which should be equal to 5 by 2. Okay? As we have already discussed that the maximum driving force available in the system it is distributed in all effects. Okay? So, we can say that delta T which is the maximum driving force and that should be equal to T naught minus T3. Right. It is equal to delta T1 plus delta T2 plus delta T3 right? and delta T1 is basically driving force in first effect and that is T0 minus T1. In the similar line I can consider delta T2 as T1 minus T2 and delta T3 as T2 minus T3. Right? So, I can write total driving force which is basically 250 minus 125. So, 125 is available and I am considering delta T1 plus delta T2 plus delta T3 and divide this by delta T1 and multiply this by delta T1. Similarly, I am considering here. Okay. So, considering all these points all the delta all these value like delta T2 by delta T1 and delta T3 by delta T1 are given here. Okay. So, we can finally obtain delta T1 as 24.1936, delta T2 as 40.3226 and delta T3 as 60.4839. Okay. And this you know already this is basically T0 minus T1. Right? So, you can find out T1 from here and similarly you can find out T2 and T3 you can fix at 125. Right. So, in this way we can find so in this way we can find the unknown temperature, okay? but that is based on the assumption that equal heat transfer is occurring in each effect. Okay? Now, second step is to find out L1, L2 and L3. Right? So, first of all we will find out L3 because in forward sequence final product exits from third effect. If I consider backward sequence, so here I should consider L1 not L3. Okay? I hope you understand that. Whatever solute is available in feed 
the complete solute is now available in L3, right? Assuming that all vapors are, assuming that all vapors do not contain any solute, right? So, here we can make the component balance such as F xf should be equal to L3 x3, okay? And feed and product concentration you know already. So, you can find out L3 value as 10,000 pound per hour, okay? So, now next you have to compute L1 and L2, okay? Because if you remember you have 6 parameters in which T1 and T2 you have already obtained. Now, we have to compute L1 and L2 and for that we should focus on all 3 enthalpy balance equation, okay? Or we can say the enthalpy balance equation of all 3 effects and these equations are like this, okay? Now, if you focus on these two equations, what are the unknowns over here? We have L1, T1, T2 now, T1, T2 now I know, F I know, L1 is unknown and L2 is unknown. Similarly, L2 is unknown, T2 I know, T3 I know, L1, L2 are unknown, L2 are unknown and L3 is known to me, right? So, if you consider last two equations, you can find that the unknowns are only L1 and L2, fine? And as we have two equations and two unknown, we can simply solve these equations simultaneously to find out value of L1 and L2. And I hope you understand the meaning of solving the equation simultaneously, right? So, solving these equations, we can find L1 and L2 like this, okay? And once I know the value of L1 and L2, I can put this equation, I can, I can put these values in first effect to find out V0. So, V0 I can obtain like this, okay? And now next step is to find out heat transfer area, okay? Because 5 parameters you have already computed. So, to find out heat transfer area, we should focus on rate equation. So, let us see the first effect rate equation. So, that should be equal to u1 delta t1 into A, okay? Because now I am considering different area because area of because area of each effect I have assumed as equal, but now we can, but now we are considering different areas. So, A1 we can obtain as V0 lambda0 divided by u1 delta t1. So, this value we can obtain like this. Similarly, I can obtain A2 as well as A3, okay. So, area you can obtain like this. So, what is the point to consider over here? Each effect has different area, okay. And we already assume that area of each effect is same. So, how I can find the average area of this, okay. And we will further redistribute the temperature difference based on the deviation of average area and the individual area. I hope you are getting the procedure because all these values are based on the assumption that equal heat transfer is occurring which is not possible in evaporators. So, we have to carry out different iterations to reach to the final result. And these iterations we will carry out based on different area and equal area which is basically the average area of effect, right? So, now we can find out the average area of each effect and that area we can weight it based on temperature, based on temperature difference of each effect. So, here I am having A into delta T and this should be equal to A1 delta T1 plus A2 delta T2 plus A3 delta T3. So, Average area you can find as 1138 and if you observe these area, these area differ significantly than this value, right? So, we have to deviate driving force of each effect like here I am having the second iteration, right? So, here I am having delta T1 which is basically the revised value and that should be A1 delta T1 by A. How much area we have to obtain and how much we are deviating. Based on that, we will recalculate delta T1, 
ok. So, similarly we can find similarly we can find out delta T 2 and delta T 3 and values of these deltas we can obtain as 31.798 degree Fahrenheit, 34.575 degree Fahrenheit and 58.626 Fahrenheit ok. So, in this way you can find out the temperature difference and now you can find out T 1 and T 2 value as revised values right because you can fix T naught and T 3 you cannot change these, but T 1, T 2 you can change ok. So, for the new values of temperatures you have to find out new values of L 1 and L 2 and so the V naught and so A 1, A 2, A 3 and again you have to find out the average area ok. So, this practice should be kept on doing till I will find all 6 till I will find values of all 6 parameters equal in two consecutive iterations and results I have summarized as if you see here I am having number of trials or the iterations and here I am having L 1 value, L 2 value, V naught, A, delta T 1, delta T 2 and delta T 3. So, if you see in first iteration I have observed values like this, this is the average area of first iteration and these values we already have seen in first iteration ok. So, if I change this, so if I change these temperatures the driving force you can further revise like this and you can find out other parameters ok. So, in this way you can stabilize the result where if you observe last two iterations results like this values are equal in two consecutive iteration except value after decimal ok. So, in this way we can design a multiple effect evaporator it means you can find out area of evaporator along with the steam consumption ok. Now, once you are having the steam consumption you can find out steam economy and that steam economy should be V 1 plus V 2 plus V 3 divided by V naught right. In this way you can obtain the steam economy because once you know L 1, L 2, L 3 you can compute V 1, V 2 and V 3 fine. So, in this way we can design multiple effect evaporators and here I am stopping this lecture. We will continue design of multiple effect evaporator with another method in next lecture and that is all for now. Thank you.